Well, hello. Here we are on Christmas Eve. Only one sleep left. I must say, it's a very different Christmas Eve for me. No Chris Dingle making, no crib service, although there is an online crib service which you can um, access on the website. No late night service. You know, there's something very special about driving home after the midnight communion. The roads are empty. The odd house still has its windows lit. My trees usually shining out in the dark terrace. But most of all, there is a great feeling of peace. And I always think how appropriate for the birth of the Prince of Peace. But let's look at the main event. It was far from peaceful in Bethlehem. The town was buzzing with people coming to pay their taxes. Every inn was packed and, as we know, the young couple were fortunate to be offered a stable. I'm sure it was far from peaceful. Disgruntled livestock pushed aside to make room. The shepherds on the hillside were startled by the noise of the angels. The heavens were ringing with songs of praise and joy. I'm sure the shepherds themselves were, were shouting in panic. And the angels sang, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, good will towards man. On earth peace. The Messiah had come. The prophecy in Isaiah had been fulfilled. Listen again. For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government will be upon his shoulders, and he shall be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the greatness of his government and of peace, there will be no end. He will reign on David's throne and over his kingdom, establishing and upholding it with justice and righteousness from that time on and forevermore. The Prince of Peace Jesus is the one who will bring peace to the world. And it's not just a fleeting peace, it's a never-ending peace. And Jesus brings peace between man and God through the cross. Paul would develop the theme of peace at length in Romans, where he says in Romans 5, Therefore, since we have been justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. And then Galatians, peace is noted as part of the fruit of the Spirit, something that can be seen in us when we're living in the Spirit, when we've asked the Holy Spirit into our lives and we're, we're building the fruit of the Spirit in our lives. Peace is noted as part of the fruit of the Spirit. And before his death, Jesus told his followers, Peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you, not as the world gives do I give to you. Let not your hearts be troubled, and let them not be afraid. And following his resurrection, we read, On the evening of that day, the first day of the week, the doors being locked where the disciples were for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said to them, Peace be with you. And of course, in Philippians, we read of the peace of God, which passes all understanding. The peace which God gives, which flows from the sense of his presence. The peace which comes unexpectedly when we are in need of body, mind or spirit. That blessed calmness, which we, we can't put into words, which can only be known in the deepest part of our being and is an expression of the unfathomable depth of God's love for us. 
Peace is an integral part of our faith, and we can have that peace because of the work at Calvary, because of the work of the blood of the cross. Do you know the peace of Christ? The gift that baby brought was peace between man and God. Have you taken hold of that gift, made peace with God? There's no time like the present. I've been delighted, if not a bit surprised, over the past few nights on the news to hear the church spoken of in such positive terms. And it's heartening that the churches have not been closed in this coming lockdown. Newscasters have spoken of the support and comfort that the church brings to people and how necessary it has been in this difficult time and what an important part the church has played over these fearful months by being available uh, in the flesh if you like and uh, and online the church brings comfort in the knowledge that the Prince of Peace has promised to be with us always, whatever lies ahead. As he said to the disciples, he also says to us, Fear not, peace be with you. May you experience his peace as you celebrate his birth. And here's wishing you all a very peaceful and blessed Christmas. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, we wait with excited anticipation to celebrate again your birth, to rejoice with the angels as we exclaim glory to, glory to God in the highest, on earth peace and goodwill to all men. We praise you, we worship you, we give thanks to you. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, Blessed Trinity. Amen. And the peace of God that passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, rest upon you and all those whom you love this day and forevermore. Amen. Well, goodbye for now. And I'll see you again online on Sunday. And a very happy Christmas to you all. Bye-bye. <laughs>